So today we'll be continuing our discussion on the language Verilog. Uh, so if you just recall that in our last lecture we had looked at some typical Verilog programs codes and we had uh, seen for instance how we can declare a variable. So we had said that we can have a variable of two types net type and register type and depending on the way we are using it, it can be synthesized into either an interconnecting wire or into a storage element like a register or a latch. And uh, we also looked at how we can define a constant value in an expression. So continuing from that point onward, today first we shall see that how we can define a named constant, a constant with a name. Now in Verilog, it is called a parameter. So a parameter is a constant which can be defined against a name and that name can be used in an expression. For example, these are ways in which you can define a parameter. For example, hi high equal to 25, a low low equal to 5 or parameter up equal to 0, 0. This down equal to 0, 1, steady equal to 1, 0. You can define like this. In the Verilog code, instead of writing 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 0, you can refer to them by up, down or steady. Okay? Now here one characteristic of this parameter type is that you do not specify the size of the parameter when you, when you define it in a name. Now the size gets decided from the constant which gets assigned to it. Okay? For example, in this case, high equal to 25 or low equal to 5, uh, here you can find out easily that high can be represented in 5 bits, low can be represented in 3 bits. So, this the value of the constant will determine the size of this constant, how it will be mapped into the actual hardware when it is, when it is actually synthesized. But in some cases, we can simply define a parameter the value will be coming from outside. It is something similar to a global variable. So there by default, the size is taken to be 32 bits because inside the model, you really do not know what is the value that will be assigned. Okay? Fine. But in this case, the size of high and low is 5 and 3. Yeah, in this case, if you specify the value, you can, you can easily determine how many bits you require to represent that. Here it will be 2. So there will be 32 bits if nothing is if it nothing it is specified not by default, it is 32, yes. If it is not initialized, it will be taken to be 32. Okay. Next, let us come to the different logic values that you can use in specifying for simulation or for synthesis. Now, in Verilog, these four are the logic values which are used. 0 means logic 0, 1 means logic 1 x and z, z means the high impedance state and x is a state which is not known, it is an unknown state. Okay? So unknown and high impedance are different. So actually when you say that the state of a line is at high impedance state, you know for certain that the driver of that line, this has a tri-state capability and the tri-state control is currently disabled. So, this line is really at a high impedance state, but when you say it is x, you really do not know what value the line is at in 0 or 1. Okay? So, there is a difference and for the purpose of simulation, this is for simulation only. So, when you are simulating a Verilog module, a Verilog code, then all the nets which are not connected either physically or logically. Physically means you have defined a net, but there is no driver to that net or there is a driver which is currently in the tri-state. So, they will all be set to the z state and since the register variables have to be initialized before we actually start the process of simulation. So, all register variables by default will be set to the undefined state at the beginning of the simulation. So, so, actually for correct operation of the circuit, it will be your responsibility to apply suitable inputs, so that the register variables are set to a known set of values 
before you can apply meaningful inputs uh, and get the outputs. Okay. And uh, corresponding to these four logic values, Verilog provides a set of predefined logic gates and or not XOR etcetera. So, we will see the list of gates, but one thing we understand first thing is that Verilog as a language it provides this predefined logic gates as the basic primitive. So, it is not something which you are including here which you are adding to the feature of the language unlike VHDL. VHDL does not have any predefined logic gate by default, but Verilog has. Okay. And the way the functionalities of these gates are defined that is quite consistent with these four logic values 0, 1, x and z. Just for example, if you have an AND gate, suppose you have a two input AND gate, there are two inputs and there is one output. So, the way it is defined is that it is very easy to understand you see that if the inputs are 0 and 0 obviously, output will be 0. 0, 1, 1, any 1 is 0, output will again be 0. Only when both of them are 1, then the output is 1. But if one of the inputs are at 1, the other is unknown, the output will also be unknown, because the output will depend on the value here. But if one of the input is 0 and the other is unknown, then you can definitely say the output will be 0, because it is an AND gate. Similarly, if, if one input is 1, and the other is a tri state value, output you cannot say what it will be. So, it is defined as x. Similarly, z and x will generate x. So, in this way, you can define the values for the other types of gate. For example, I am giving another example. Suppose you have an XOR gate. Suppose you have a two input XOR. A, B and F. Okay. Well, the normal truth table of XOR you already know, I am not showing those things, I am showing the other cases. For example, if one of the input is 0, B is unknown, then output will be unknown. If one input is 1, other input is unknown, output will also be unknown. If one input is 0, the other input is a tri state, this will be unknown. 1 z this will also be unknown. So, this XOR is one gate where in where uh, just in addition to the four normal completely specified condition the other combination will all lead to a uh, lead to an undefined value in the output. This is unlike AND and OR gates for example, in an OR gate if one input is at 1 then whatever you apply in the other input the output will be 1. Right. So, it really depends on the gate type you are using and you can define the functionality like this. So, so uh, in the language Verilog this functionality is already defined in this way, so that during simulation you can get consistent behavior. Okay. And the gate types which are supported are these, these are the primitive logic gates which you can include in a Verilog module through instantiation and NAND or ZOR, NOR, ZOR, XNOR, NOT, buffer. Buffer is just like a driver, it does not invert the logic value and, and as you can see the convention is that the first parameter is the output, the next parameters are the input. For example, in the first case the inputs will be in 1 and in 2, the output will be out. So, you can have all the basic gate types available as part of the language. Uh, these are the normal gates where the outputs are not tri stated. In addition, you can have a set of tri state buffers also, which you can use in your definition. There are four types buffer if 1, buffer if 0, not if 1, not if 0. The meaning is like this. The first one this is buff if 1, this says that the input of this buffer is in, this is a 
non inverting buffer so there is no inversion the output is out and and it will be enabled if the control is at 1 so it will be like this it's control but in the second case buff if 0 this situation will be like this in out and the control will have an inversion out here this is buff if 0. The last two cases are similar just instead of a buffer there is an inversion there these are actually inverters right. So, these are the primitive gates which are available to you you can use them in your design you can instantiate them you can create any netlist of gates. Okay. Control by definition should must not be in the high impedance. If it is in the high impedance state, the output will be x. Okay, if it is in the other state, output will be tri-stated. Just to enable it, you will have to make it one or zero. And if it is in the other state, it will be tri. Output will be z. So, these four gate types, these all have output tri-state control. Okay, fine. Uh, now, let us note a few points. See here for all the primitive gates that we have just now seen, the output of the gate that must be connected to a net. That is how we had given a few examples earlier that whenever you have a gate, that gate must drive some net which may be an output or which may drive another gate. Now, the input ports for the for each gate the input port the inputs which are coming that can again be nets which are coming from the outputs of some other gates or they can be register type variables which are possibly coming from some register or flip flop or latches. So, the input ports to a gate can be of net type or it can also be of register type, but one thing to remember register type variable does not always mean that it will be synthesized into a register. Well, well it is most likely to be synthesized in a register, but in some cases as we shall see that the translator or the synthesizer can do some optimization where the register can be done away with register is not required. Okay. So, this primitive gate as I have said they have a single output by any number of input. See in the examples I have we have seen like here the gates all of them have two inputs, but you can also have a gate declaration say and uh, which will have sorry out an output and for example, there are four inputs. So, you can use any number of parameters you want, Verilog does not put any restriction to that, but to be realistic you should limit the number of inputs to a gate. Typically we do not use gate fan in greater than 4, because if you try to use gate fan in more than 4 the delay of the gate goes on increasing. So, that leads to a problem. So, the primitive gates as you use them in your design they will obviously have a single output, but they can have any number of inputs. And as we shall see this is again used solely for the purpose of simulation not for synthesis that you can specify a delay with with each gate or with each component you use in your design. See once you have this delay specified then you can interpret your result of simulation that after this much time the output should change state. You can see the timing diagram for example, and see that it is really changing after that time right. So, this delay specification is used only for simulation and when you are doing or carrying out a synthesis, synthesis simply ignores those delay specification commands, because synthesis is carried out by 
uh, you can say a software tool which will be targeting some target libraries which is already there. Now, the libraries contain some gates or other components which whose delays are already known pre specified. So, user cannot give the delay. Suppose you are trying to uh, target a design set to CMOS technology. Now, in CMOS technology in the library, already the gates will be available as complete layouts. So, once the gates are available in that form, the exact physical and electrical characteristic of those gates are already known. And so, the delays are already known, you cannot specify anything. So, as soon as you pick up that gate from that library, the delay gets specified automatically. Yes. Yes. No, no, output port means of a gate, I mean. Output port means the, the output of a gate. No, no, as I said that by default is a register, but uh, the translator sometimes can replace a register by a wire if the register is really not needed. So, unless you have some clocking, there is no need uh, to hold the value in a register and then forward it. Okay. So, the, unless you have explicit clocking, this will be translated into a net, but otherwise it will be a register. That is what I am saying. I have uh, not talked anything about clock as yet. That is why I am making this statement. Okay, now, let us give an example where you can specify these delays. Okay. This is a very simple example of a Verilog module. Just ignore the first line for the time being. I will come to this first line. This is a module which realizes the exclusive OR function as connection of NAND, AND and OR gates. So, if you look at uh, this netlist, how what, what it is, there is a NAND gate which takes A and B as the inputs, the output is T 1. There is another AND gate which takes A and T 1. Okay. So, there is an AND gate, one input is T 1, other input is A, this gives T 2. There is another AND gate which takes T 1 and B, T 1 and B, this is T 3 and there is an OR gate which takes this T 3 and T 2 and generates F. Now, means if you evaluate, you will find F is nothing but the exclusive OR function of A and B just you have implemented it in this way. Okay. Now, otherwise the specification is fine, f a b are the parameters, a b are the input, f is the output, t 1, t 2, t 3 are the in internal signal nets which have been declared as wires, but you observe here that we have specified some number just alongside these modules we are instantiating, hash followed by a constant value. Now, this constant value indicates the delay, delay in some time units. So, this hash 5 actually means 5 time units of delay. Okay. So, well you can specify the same time unit or you can specify you can specify any variable time unit for the different modules you are instantiating, for the different uh, basic components you are instantiating. You can have 1, 2, 3, anything you can give here, <coughs> fine. Now, these numbers you specify are just numbers and that number will get multiplied by some basic time scale you can say in order to get the actual time. Now, that actual time is specified by the first line. Now, again this first line is used only for simulation purpose. For synthesis, this does not make any meaning, does not make any sense. See, reverse quote time scale 1 nanosecond slash 1 nanosecond. This is a typical statement. Now, let us see what this really means. Sir, uh, yes. 
f uh, is a register type you really do not know because this module f might be going to another gate in another module in that case you really don't need a storage element here the so dependence we have not explicitly specified it depends on the context in which you are using that whether so it will be mapped of a gate can also be a register. it can also be a register it can also be a net it depends on the context you are using yes true time scale, time scale is a very low keyword yes now let us explain what this huh? reverse flow it has to be used with the reverse code or it has to be used with the reverse code. Yes. So, the all these are basically the simulator directive, the simulator directives all begin with the reverse code. Okay. So, let us see that what this means reverse slash time scale. The general syntax is reverse slash time scale then you specify a uh, reference time unit, then a slash, then you specify something called time precision. Just an example, suppose I specify reverse slash time scale say 10 nanoseconds slash 1 nanosecond this will actually mean that say here you again look at this we are specifying delays like this. Suppose in a specification somewhere I give NAND hash 5 then something. Now, this hash 5 will actually mean 5 multiplied by 10 nanoseconds this will actually mean 50 nanoseconds, but the resolution with which I can specify the delay is this I can specify 5.2 also, but if I specify 5.23 then this 3 will be ignored. This the first number represents the reference time unit with which the specified numbers will get multiplied. The second one represents up to how many decimal places or means what is the precision with which you can specify this time. Now, in this example we have given both of these to be the same 1 nanosecond and 1 nanosecond which means that we will be specifying only integer values. Okay. So, the purpose of the time scale, time scale command is this. See the ratio 10 divided by 1 it is 10 that means, we can represent up to one decimal place, but if it is 100 picosecond for example, 10 nanosecond slash 100 picosecond then you can represent up to two decimal place, if it is 10 picosecond we can represent up to three decimal places. Okay. Well, now let us uh, come to some of the hardware modeling issues. Now, here we have uh, seen some examples examples of some modules. We have seen that to we can calculate values in some statements that can be an assigned statement or in one example we have seen that we can use something like an always block inside the always block we can also do some computation. We had seen that count equal to count plus one something. So, we are computing some value. Now, the after computation the value must be held somewhere. Okay. Now, now in Verilog depending on the types of the variables and the way you are using them, the values computed can be stored temporarily I mean either in a wire or in a flip flop or in a latch. This wire is the typical scenario when you are modeling pure combination logic. There is no storage element, the value is temporarily stored in our well see here we say it is temporarily stored solely from the purpose of simulation, but in the actual hardware implementation you are really not storing anything in the wire it is just the signal is propagating from one gate to the other, but when you are simulating your time will be advancing by units of time which may be equal to the gate delays. So, after this much gate delay the output of, of the gate will get a value that value will be retained logically 
till the next time unit comes. So, in that sense we say that the value is stored or retained, okay. but actually it is not stored in any register or any storage. And if you want to really store the value somewhere, you are not needing it now, you will be needing it sometime later, you need to store the value, you need to have either a flip flop or a latch. Well, the difference between a flip flop and latch you know the flip flop is triggered by the edge of a clock and latch is typically enabled by the level of a signal. If it is low or high, the latch is enabled, otherwise it is not enabled. Okay. Now, you recall that a variable declaration in Verilog, whenever you define a variable, it can be either of the net data type or the register data type. Now, looking from the point of view of the hardware implementation of these, here, 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 whenever you define a net or a variable of type net, these will invariably map into a wire. This wire is not the wire data type, I mean a physical wire. They will be mapped into an interconnection, simple interconnection, interconnecting wire. There will be no storage, but as I mentioned, register data type, whenever you are using it, the after synthesis, it can map either into a storage cell or it can also map into an interconnecting wire. This depends on the context you are using. We shall be looking at some examples later. You will see like that you yeah, some kind of optimization is done uh, that the translator can easily find out that you really do not need to store this value somewhere. So, then it will use a wire. It will use a wire in that case, but if it cannot, if it finds out that the value has to be retained for certain input combination, that means it will have to store it somewhere. So, in that case it will map or synthesize it into a storage cell. Okay. So, it really depends on the context how you are using the variables. Let us take some examples, let us see some examples. This is a simple example which shows that how a register type declaration can map to a wire. See the first thing is that, that any signal you can define as a register type variable if you want. And here one thing you must be thinking that sometimes we are using assign, sometimes we are using this always. Well, we shall be clarifying these differences later, but what is equal to is assignment, but there are some differences. We shall be looking into the nitty gritties of this a little later, but one thing you, are, you just remember in the always block, the variables you are assigning to, they must be register type variables, but in contrast in an assign statement, the variables you are assigning values to, they are net type variables. This is one difference. Okay. So, you look at this description. This is just a dummy example, it does not do anything meaningful. A, B, C, F 1, F 2 are the parameters, A, B, C are the inputs, F 1, F 2 are the output and we have defined A, B, C as wires explicitly and F 1, F 2 as registers explicitly. This statement always at the rate at A or B or C, this statement actually means is that the block that is inside always that will be evaluated if this expression changes value, not true, it changes value. That means, either A changes or B changes or C change, that means, there is an event. This is some kind of an expression I am specifying, this is sometimes called a event expression. So, the whenever there is an there is an event out here, the block gets evaluated. You recall in the example we gave earlier, here in the event expression we had written at pause edge clock. Pause edge clock is the event, there is a positive edge on the clock, then we evaluate. But here there is no clock. So, here we are perhaps talking only about combination logic, but we are saying that if A or B or C change only then you evaluate. But one thing you again understand, this kind of statement I am making, this 
can possibly make sense only to the simulator. But when you have a hardware implementation, for example, you have uh, this is AND and NOT, it is a NAND gate. So, you have a NAND gate with the inputs A and B, this is XOR, this is F1, this gets into an XOR gate, the other input is C and you get the output F2. But once you have a hardware implementation, you really cannot tell the hardware that means only when A, B or C changes you evaluate, the evaluation will be continuous. There is no particular time or particular point in which you say well, he, well, well you can argue that the internal values cannot change unless one of the input changes, that is true, but it is a continuously driven thing. Just you cannot say that you start the evaluation, there will be a continuous evaluation which is going on if it is a combination circuit. Now, the synthesizer can look at it and find out that well number 1 there is no clock involved, there is no triggering by an edge. It says whenever the values changes you evaluate and inside it says that well there is a data dependency between these two statements. So, it will possibly synthesize it like this and it will also find out that you really do not need to to store or hold F1 in a latch or a flip flop. This can be implemented as a simple interconnecting wire, right. So, this is one simple example where this reg type variable can also map to wire. See, in fact, here you are trying to model combination circuit only, and the synthesizer is intelligent enough to detect this and map it into a non storage solution. Only when there are clock circuits or what? Not necessarily, we will see some examples. Uh, clocks are one thing, if there is a clock, it has to take place at the edge of the clock, there has to be register, but there are other cases also. You look at this example, this is apparently a problem case. Well, uh, this problem case, why I am calling it a problem case? See, the first part is the same as in the previous case. The only thing we have done, you just look at the previous example. The only thing we have done, we have interchanged F1 and F2, these two lines. See, one thing you understand. Uh, yeah, right. They should be, sorry, they should be C. They should be C. So, one thing to understand when we are writing statements inside this block, these statements are supposed to be executing concurrently, this is the semantic. But when the user is writing these statements, well perhaps it is playing on the back of my mind that the first statement when I am writing f 2 equal to f 1 x or c, this f 1 is the last value of f 1, then I am calculating a new value of f 1. So, actually when a user writes the code, the user can perhaps make that mistake that well I am actually wanting the f 1 of the previous step and then I am calculating a new f 1, but Verilog will not do that. Verilog will simply carry out a data dependency analysis assuming these statements are independent and it will synthesize the same circuit as in the previous example. This is inside the same circuit as in the previous example with a simple interconnecting wire. But what the user was thinking, if you had to implement that, then you needed a latch or a register. Because in one step of the iteration, you are calculating the value of F1, in the next of the step of the iteration, when one of the input changes, you really do not know when the input is changing. The input may change one hour later, but you will have to hold the old value of F1 till that time occurs. So, actually what the user apparently thinks and what the Verilog translator does, there can be a conflict if you are not very careful about it. But of course, if you know how the translator works and the how, the how the translator will deal with this situation, then it is fine. 
but there is chance of making mistake out here. Well, old value of f1 will not be used. Yes, you see this block will be executed whenever one of the inputs change. So, what I am saying whenever one of the input changes, it is not the old value of f1 which is used to calculate f2, it is this value of f1 which is used only. Yes. F2 will, will always use the new value of f1, yes. Because, because here, here uh, the, the semantic says that inside a beginning block, all the statements are executing concurrently. Concretely means again I am saying again I am saying that this is getting synthesized into a hardware circuit like this. So, concurrently means you can say that the that f 1 is getting a new value here, f 2 is getting a new value here at some point in time, but after a time equal to the gate delays the value of f 2 will again change because this value has changed. Yes. So, it is not only depending on a or b or c, depending on the gate delays there will be a chain of changes which goes on. Yes, yes, yes. If you require to use the old value, you would have explicitly specified in a different way. That will see how we will specify that. Chain of value of f 2 will depend on the delays of the gates as it goes on. So, that when you simulate this, you will see in the timing diagram that after some delay the values are getting changed or computed. Yes. Well, now let us look at an example where a latch or a flip flop gets explicitly inferred synthesized. Double slash means a comment in Verilog, this you can give anywhere. So, this is the specification of a simple latch where you have a data input, you have a data output and you have a load signal. Data and load are inputs, D out is an output. Now, if you look at the specification, this also uses an always. It says always load or data. So, unless data or load changes, there is no need to make any computation. So, this computation will take place whenever, whenever either data changes or load changes. Now, you look here, it says if not load, this is I say this is active low we are saying, this is active low. If load is 0, then uh, data gets into T. And uh, d out equal to not well. Now here there is a there is an inversion out here actually. Now the output also there is an inverter. So it says if the load is zero, then the data gets stored into a T. So, uh, so actually, if you draw the diagram in a different way, the latch output is T, and after T there is an inverter that is your d out. Hmm. So, if load is 0, the data gets latched into t, after that not of t gets assigned to d out. But if load is not 0, then whatever the value t was this if will not be executed, then whatever the value of t was there not of t will go out. Right. So, if the load is not active, just the data changes, there will be no change in the output. Now, you look at this code from a different angle. See, there is an if statement, but we have not specified the actions for all the branches of the if statement. We have said what to do if the if condition is satisfied is true. 
but we have not specified what is to be done if the if condition is false. That means, the else part of the if statement is not specified. Well, it can mean if yeah, but one thing you just try to understand this can be an if statement, this can be a case statement, whatever. This is a multi way branch kind of a statement where all the conditions are not specified, but here you are calculating some value t which is get assigned in some other statement outside this if. So, if all the parts of the if statement were specified, then this could have been mapped into a combination circuit. Since you have not specified what will be the value of t if load is not 0, this means you will have to remember the old value of t, because the old value of t will get assigned then. So, a rough rule of thumb is if you have a incompletely specified if statement or a case statement, this will imply a latch. That means, you need to store the values somewhere. But if the if statement was complete, even in the else part, you had written some t equal to something say, then you explicitly know that you check this, if it is true t is this, then t is this, then you go here. So, it will be a pure combination logic, there is no concept of remembering the old value. Hmm. So, if you have an incompletely specified if statement, it can be a case statement also, we will see these examples later in more detail. Then we will infer a latch. T should be a wire, T I forgot to declare, yes you are right, T should be a wire, wire T. It should be a rich T not wire, rich T because it is inside the always block. Yeah. We shall be looking at more of these examples later, so do not worry, we will see this in more detail. Now, let us very quickly browse through the different operators which are there in the language. This you can use in your coding. The arithmetic operators are very much like C multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and this modulo, modulus. Logical operators are also same negation, logical and, logical or. Relational operators are also same nothing to say here. Bitwise operator, bitwise means not and or xor, xnor. Bitwise means if you say a and b, then there will be a bitwise ending, say a is a 4 bit number, b is also a 4 bit number, there will be a bit by bit ending 0, 0, 1, 0, this will be the result. Right, and logical operators are used only in case of relational expressions. In an if statement, if this and this, like that. Bitwise operators are there. These are also there in C, similar. But what is new out here is something called reduction operators. Reduction operator is something like this. Suppose you have a number a, which is a four-bit number. And I want to do a ending of all these four bits to generate a single bit. This is called reduction. This operates on all the bits of the word and generates a single bit result. So, it can be AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, XNOR, anything. So, you can have this reduction operator also. You can uh, use this ampersand followed by A. This means reduction. this is how you use this. Shift operator is very similar to what we have in C. Concatenation replication we will show with examples. Concatenation means you can concatenate several different things to create a single bit stream, a single number. Replication some of the bit stream you can replicate, we will see with examples these two things. These two are new. Conditional again is available in C. Okay. This if then else kind of thing, condition if true then this, if false then this. 
Now, let us take some examples within which you can illustrate how to use these things. This is one simple example which illustrates some of the operators and also some other concepts. You see, this is an example which takes two inputs x and y and two outputs f1 and f2. x and y are both 10 bit quantities, these are of type where f1 is 5 bits and f2 is a single bit, right. There are four assigned statements. The first assigned statement says that you extract a subset of the number x. See, x is a vector whose indices range from 0 to 9. So, here when I say x 4 colon 0, I am extracting the least significant 5 bits of that. Similarly, here I am extracting the least significant 5 bits of y. I am doing a bit by bit ending of those two, that I am assigning to f 1. This kind of things I can do. Even if I have a big size vector, I can extract any subset of bits from there and I can use it in an expression. Similarly, I can use this thing f 2 equal to x 2, a particular bit of this x or not f 1 3, a particular bit of this. So, I invert it and I take a or. This is a reduction operation x is a 10 bit vector, I take the NAND of that, bit by bit NAND, all bits I take a NAND operation. Okay. This is an if then else, if f 2 is true, then you take these 5 bits, else you take these 5 bits, this we assign to f 1. Okay. So, these are the things you can do in Verilog, which uh, well if you recall in C, you cannot do these things you cannot extract any arbitrary subset of the language. Of course, there are other languages which are predecessors, which are predecessors of C like uh, your uh, there is a language called PL 1, there it was possible to do all these things, but in C you cannot do. And you can also have uh, some kind of a vector arithmetic operation as this example illustrates. See here we are trying to model a parallel adder parallel adder says that we have one input vector, this is a vector in one, there is another input vector in two, there is a carry in and in the output you have sum, this is also a vector and we have a carry out. This is an adder we want to model and we are wanting or requiring an 8 bit adder. So, in 1 and in 2 we have declared as 8 bit quantities, sum is also 8 bits, c in and c out are single bit quantities. Now, you look at this line, in 1 plus in 2 plus carry in, this will be the result, result will go where? Result will go into the concatenation of c out and sum. So, even while assigning I can specify concatenation, this will be an 8 plus 1 9 bit quantity. And so, the result will be computed in 9 bits and that will be assigned to the combination of c out and sum, this 9 bit combination. Okay. So, this is an example of using concatenation in the assignment in the left hand side and this is again for the purpose of simulation. So, you assume that this addition will take 20 units of time. Now, there are a few other things you should keep in mind that if in an expression you have z or x, I mean it is not a logical expression, it is an, it is an arithmetic expression, you are doing some addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. If any one bit of any one of the operands is either at x or at z, then the entire result will be x. For in case of logical expressions, you have seen that we can use some logic to generate the output values, but for arithmetic expression we cannot say anything, we will straight away say it is x not known. 
and uh, another thing is that the logical operator or the relational operator they all evaluate to binary value 0 and 1. Of course, sometimes logical operators if the operands are x or z they can evaluate to undefined, but relational operator less than greater than they define to yes or no. Boolean false is represented as 0, Boolean true is represented as 1. Just like C, you can use them as numbers and use in an expression you can compare if you want. Logical operator do not evaluate to a z or what sometimes? Logical operator cannot evaluate to a tri state. It cannot evaluate to a tri state. Logical yeah, operator means uh, this condition is true and this condition is true. It is not an AND gate you are modeling. So, just one uh, just here one last slide to show some more examples of assignments. See here you can assign do an assignment like this. This is very much like what you can do in C. Right hand side compares if P is equal to 1 1 1 1 4 bit combination. This is a relational expression. This can evaluate to either 0 or 1. This will be assigned to out P. And similarly, if you, if you, you can write an if statement like this if load and some condition select equal to 0 1. You can make an assignment this is right shift left shift, right shift by one place, left shift by three places. Assign f equal to a b, this is concatenation. This a b you concatenate, then you assign the total thing to f. Similarly, this is another concatenation a followed by this three. 3 bit number 101, then B, whatever it is that we assign to F. This is also concatenation x2, this 1 bit, y0, another bit, and A. This you can just assign. This is an example of replication. See, within curly brackets, if you give a number, again a curly bracket, within curly bracket, you specify something then that something will be replicated so many times. So, in this example whatever is the value of A that will be replicated 4 times and then that will be assigned to F. F. This replication and concatenation you can mix up binary 1 0 followed by 3 times 0 1. So, 1 0 followed by 0 1 0 1 0 1 followed by whatever is the value of x that this thing is concatenated and the value is assigned to f. Yes. No, no. This is also a valid statement in C, something like this. Of course, in C you cannot write this. This is a relational expression. Double equal to means if p is equal to this, 1 or 0 this will evaluate to a single bit value that will be assigned to out p. F has to be appropriate size. Appropriate size, this is just, just for example purpose I have given, f has to be an appropriate size, it must be of the same size as the right hand side. And, uh, so, hash 20 that is just for the sake of specifying the delay of this statement. This is an concatenation, I am assigning it to this. C out and sum that is the implied, C out is 1 bit and sum is an 8 bit, total is 9 bit and the result will come as 9 bits that will get assigned to this 9 bits. So, the MSB will go to C out. Uh, so, in our Next class, uh, we shall be looking at some of the Verilog description styles, slightly higher level description styles, uh, which you will see interestingly, they will be mapping in terms of synthesis into very well known hardware modules. So, as a designer, you need to know that means, if I write my code like this, this will get mapped into a multiplexer. If I do it like this, this will get mapped into a decoder or something like that. So, we shall be looking at some of those design styles in the next class. Thank you.